that you are mindful of every detail of our lives, Lord. Thank you that your plans for us are good, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you say that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, Lord. That you love us unconditionally, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will just minister through me to your precious people, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that your that the hearts will be softened, Lord. And I thank you for your word, that your word will bring encouragement, Lord. Glorify you, King Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness in our lives. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So I'm going to have a few scriptures. I'm sure you have it on your Bible app, I believe. Otherwise, you can just listen. Is that right? Oh, you don't hear me. Okay, let's try this. Okay. Okay, we're going to start with Revelations 12, verse 11, which says, And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So when you need to ask me, I said, okay, it's always good for us to testify, but in that way we overcome. If we're going through things, just keep on testifying about the Lord's goodness. Okay? Um, first, I want us to look at Joseph's life. You can just listen. We all know the story. He got the promise. He's going to be this very important man, and his brothers are going to bend down before him and the whole thing. And what happened just after that? The total opposite happened. Okay? He, they tried to kill him, they threw him into the pit, and then he was sold off as a slave. He went to Egypt. Um, there, Potiphar's wife taught lies about him. He, um, the, 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 the baker and the cup bearer lied to him in jail. So everything just went. All the way to the other side. And I, I believe this period of time that from Joseph got the promise until he got to the uh, the promise until he got to the fulfillment of the promise was about 14 years. Okay? So it's not a short period of time. So first the promise come and then comes the test. <laughs> and the test is usually that long extended period. Né? You all know you've all been through tests in your life. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> so in our situation, the same happened. We got this promise, oh, it's about 17 years ago, that the Lord is going to use us in business. And, um, you know, we're going to make, we're going to advance the kingdom by doing business. And that's what the Lord promised us on a couple of areas of times. But that, just after that, the total opposite happened. We had to move out of four houses. We had to move our cars back to the bank many times. I mean, we went through like... Total different things. Lost a lot of land, started new businesses, lost everything again. So we went like this a couple of times past, in these past 17 years. Okay, y'all. So I see she's laughing. She okay. But um, so when you get the promise, there's two things that happens. First of all, the enemy also hears about the promise. Okay. So what he can't stop what the Lord has promised in your life, but he can try to delay. He, um, he tries to discourage us. He brings so many disappointments. So he tries to hinder what the Lord wants to do. Okay, so that's on the one side. On the other side, let's look at um, Deuteronomy 8, verse 2. The word says, I'm the Lord your God. We led you all the way, the 40 years, to humble you, to test you, to know what is in your heart. So on the other side, the Lord is allowing this desert period. He's allowing these storms because he wants to test us and he wants to show us what's in our hearts. Yeah. Yeah, and then we see what comes out sometimes. Eh? And he humbles us. It's a very humbling experience when the bank comes to take your cars and everything and the, the sheriff is at your door. It's, it's not a nice place to be. But, it's, but he humbles us to show us what's in our hearts. Okay. And I don't know for you who have been in desert periods, everything you try Nothing is working out for you. Everybody around you is they're trusting the Lord for children. Everybody is having kids. You're not having no kids. Everybody is meeting new, uh, new husbands. You're not getting married. I mean, if you're going through a business struggle, everybody is opening up new businesses. Everybody is prospering. And you on the other side, nothing is going through. People are now thinking, you know, <laughs> it's not like we, my husband is intelligent man, nothing is working out for us. And people are looking and they think, what's wrong with these people? They must be in sin. <laughs> but you know what? So the Lord takes us through these desert periods. 
And the other thing, what the, what the rest of that um, verse is, um, your clothes did not wear out, and nor did your feet swell these 40 years. So the Lord is so amazing, and I can really testify about that in my life. You know, I love dressing up and everything, and there was, there was no money for clothes and things like this in this very long period, but the Lord just blessed me. I had so many amazing friends. I love got a bag full of black coat. <laughs> That black bag full of clothes, would you like to come in? With tags still on, I mean, my outfit today, all this and this is, somebody gave it to me. And so the Lord doesn't make us look that we are wearing out. And even my children, I never had to buy clothes, you know, that the clothes were just coming from everywhere. It was always nice things, they were old things. Um, even my hairdresser the other day when I was at her again, I, I remember she, she would look at my roots and say, oh, no, honey, you need to come for your roots, you need a treatment as well. So even in this desert period, you know what you're going through, and the people close to you know what you're going through, because the Lord is working with you. But He doesn't expose you to the rest. Man. That's how amazing He is. Man. So Isaiah 50 verse 7 says, it's one of our favorite scriptures, For the Lord helps me. I will not be ashamed or humiliated. I will make my face like flint, and He will not put me to shame. And I can really testify about this. So many times, you know, we were far behind with the school fees and everything. Mm -hmm. And I would just, but he never humiliated us. He never put us to shame. Always, sometimes we even got the letters. Listen, you're sorry, there is now suspension. But the Lord still came through for us. And it's not like we had to keep our children in Maragon. I mean, we could have moved to a more affordable school. But the Lord never told me. He said to us, that's where they need to be. And he never told me differently. So he did come through every time for us. So he's just amazing. Okay. Okay, another scripture that is like so dear to my heart. I had it on my fridge for a very long time. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Where the, word, where the Lord says, I will not. I will not. I will not in any way leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor relax my hold on you, nor let you down. Okay, he says it three times because he means it. Yeah. So when they want to cut our electricity, I would just stand there in front of the fridge and I'd say, Lord, your word says you will not, you will not, you will not. You know, and he came through for us every time. I mean, I remember the one time they did cut it because we didn't have, we didn't have any money to pay it. But even then, he was so um, gracious. There was something wrong with everybody's electricity. <laughs> so everybody's generators were on, not only ours. So that's just, he didn't even remember. I mean, you know, because I've been going through these seasons, I know exactly. I can see when I walk into the clicks, I shame these people, people don't have money. Or I can, if I hear a generator, I think shame, the electricity's been cut. You know, because I've been through it so many times. I know what they are feeling. Yes. Okay, but the Lord is so amazing. Okay, let's look at um, Joseph's life again. I mean, Joseph had many reasons for unforgiveness, hatred, resentment, so many things that he could allow in his heart against the people, both of his wife, his brothers, all the people in jail. So in the desert period, it's very important. If we look at Proverbs 4 verse 23, the Lord says, God, your heart more than anything, because from your heart, all the issues of life spread. So we are not, we must not allow resentment, hatred, unforgiveness, bitterness, offenses, we must not allow them into our hearts. Because you know what, our bodies were not made for those, for those emotions. I mean, if we, if we keep them inside for too long, eventually, not all the time, but eventually, it will go over to a sickness. I mean, let's look at what some of the scripture says. It says um, in um, somewhere, it's in Proverbs, Jealousy and envy brings brittleness to our bones. Yeah. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. So the Lord is not telling these things for us to, you know, to, to catch us out or whatever. He knows what is going to be the end result. You know, so we need to say, Lord, I confess that I've been sitting with this anger or whatever. Forgive me, because I know it's a sin and I'm still the righteousness of God, but change my heart there. And I, I bless these people. Um, 
Okay, in our own lives, obviously there was so many people, I mean, it was just not business. It was a lot of court cases and a lot of trauma and a lot of other things as well. So we really, really had to forgive a lot of people. And not the once of thing, it was a, a ongoing thing. So many times we had to forgive again. You know, and I just said to my husband at some stage, I'm going to be spiteful and I've gonna, I'm going to forgive give every person that come against us and say things about us. And I'm going to bless them. I'm going to pray for their business. I'm going to pray for their families. Because I'm not going to get out of this long journey and sit with some kind of a sickness. Yeah. I refuse that. So we just sat and we just said we choose to forgive them and we bless them. And that's what we did time and again. It gets easier. I mean, the Lord looked at your obedience. Maybe your heart doesn't feel like it. But if you keep on saying it and you keep on speaking it with your mouth, yeah. your heart will change at some, some place. So it's an obe act of obedience. Oh, another thing. Okay, we must not give offense. Oh, we must not be offended. But another important thing is we must not give offense. You know, sometimes we are in this. We're on the mountaintop. You know, we just woo, and we are so in such a good place, or whatever. And we forget sometimes it is people sitting around us and down in the valley. Yeah. So you know, if we do give offense in the Holy Spirit, just say sorry. You know, forgive me. I didn't mean to hurt you. Now, because most of the times we don't mean it maliciously, but sometimes we do it. So be, be careful, don't offend other people. Yeah. I'm speaking to myself as well. We must not offend other people. <clears throat> okay, another thing, I don't know, there's a scripture that says Joseph only got out of um, jail when only the word of the Lord was coming out of his mouth. Okay, so that's why it took him so long, I think. So, <clears throat> We must say, we must watch what we say. Okay. Now, number 14, verse 28 says, As I live, says the Lord, just what I've heard, uh, uh, but what you have spoken in my hearing, I will most certainly do to you. So, what we speak, we're going to get. Yeah. The, the, the other scripture is, we will eat the fruit of our lips. So now what do we do? We all women, now I pray in my room, I pray, pray for my husband to change and everything to change. Now I go for coffee with my friend and, and I'm like, oh, I don't think he's ever going to change. And my good friend that she is will say, oh yeah, that one, oh, I don't think he's going to change. Okay, so what just happened? We come, came to agreement of what the enemy wants us to come in agreement with. We didn't come into the agreement with the word of the Lord. We cannot allow to do it. It actually kind of cancels out the prayer. You know, because we just came to an agreement with the enemy. When we must always speak life and what the Lord says of our circumstances. Okay. Um, okay, in scriptures. Very important. You need scriptures to stand on. I mean, you've been serving the Lord for a long time. You know most of these things. You need scriptures to stand on. I mean, you can wake me up in the middle of the night and I will just start declaring, my God will abundantly supply to all my needs according to his riches. I mean, if you're going through fear, you need scriptures of fear to help you, to sustain you. If you're going through something in your marriage, something with your children, you need scriptures to stand up. I mean, um, the word says that um, the angels hearken unto the word of the Lord. If we don't give the angels something to work with, they cannot bring change. So if we speak the word of our circumstances, immediately the angels go and they start bringing change in our circumstances. Okay, so if we speak negative things, they don't have anything to do. They don't have, they can't help us. Okay? And I know we are all women, you know, sometimes we wake up and we feel like the tail, but the word says we are the head. So we need to declare, even if we feel that, we must say, Lord, thank you that I'm the head and I'm not the tail. I'm going up, I'm not going under. Okay. Joel 3 verse 10 says, Let the weak say I'm strong. And let the poor sound rich. Sure. You know, if you don't have money in the bank account or you feel sick, or, you must still say, I'm strong in Jesus. We cannot come in agreement with, what, not, with anything else that the Lord is saying about us. So it's very important, okay, to watch what we say. Always. I mean, we've got these sayings in Af Afrikaans. I just do it more. I can't hide from You know, we are saying things that we cannot say. You know, it is not, you know, we are prophesying our own future. We need to speak life over ourselves. Okay, another thing is I've got, um, I'm really blessed, I've got amazing. Can you just repeat the last scripture? 
It was, it is um, Joel 3 verse 10. Okay. Um, okay, and then Psalm 92 verse 12 says, The righteous is like a palm tree. And you know what happens to a palm tree? When it's bent down, all the way like this in a storm, it grows stronger. Okay? So when we go through these storms in life, when we come up straight, we are stronger and the Lord can use us and work through us. I'm very blessed. I've got um, special ladies that do this, my prayer, prayer friends. So I can speak to anything about them. You know, they pray, they pray for me, they will speak life over our circumstances. Mm -hmm. That will give me um, advice, good advice. So remember when you go through a trial and you go through something that you need a lot of faith for, it's not always a very good thing to let the whole prayer chamber. Okay, you need to let know people that you know that will only speak life over your circumstances. I even remember that one movie, um, Breakthrough, where the little boy drowned. And the mom said, everybody gets out of the room yeah. because we can't allow people malicious or they intentionally want to hurt you but now I hear oh this poor lady's being diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and I'm like oh find somebody oh she, did you hear she's got two small children and we come in agreement over this person's circumstances and we, we're supposed to speak life you know because God is a God of impossible okay so be very careful for that I've learned that you know I'm just telling everybody that's going on in my life and then sometimes my husband said you know what stop doing that Sometimes our circumstances look like we're never going to make it. But, but God. <laughs> okay, and the Word of God. Okay. So, um, okay, there's another scripture. Cease, of uh, Hebrews 10, verse 23. The Lord says, cease and hold steadfast to your confession of hope without wavering. Because you as promised is reliable, trustworthy, and faithful to his word. Okay, there's a translation that says we cannot expect to receive anything if we go like this, like the waves of the sea. Today I believe that all is going to come through for me, tomorrow I don't believe anything. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't live like that. Um, Psalm 62 verse 6 says, The Lord is my rock and my salvation. He's my fortress and my defense. I will not be shaken nor discouraged. Even if tomorrow, if I don't get good news, we will not be shaken nor discouraged. We cannot go like this. We cannot go like this. Romans 12 verse 12 says, we must constantly rejoice in hope. We must be steadfast and patient in distress, continually asking for wisdom and guidance. Okay, there's a lot of steadfastness. No, we, 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 we cannot go up and down. And even with our children, we need to learn them. You know, if something happens at school, we cannot go like this the whole time. We need to be steadfast. The Lord is our rock and our salvation. Jeremiah 23 verse 29. My word is like a consuming fire. It's like a hammer that break open the most stubborn rock. So every time you speak that truth over your circumstances, it's like a hammer. Every time. It will change. And you speak it until it starts changing. Okay, then um, about 13 and a half years ago, so this is now a bit of my testimony again. 13 and a half years ago, we, 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 um, my husband got favor with his uncle ha uh, Harold. He's got a piece of land just there close to Marigold High School, across the house. Okay, so this guy, this old man said, you know, you will help us to purchase that piece of, oh, we can purchase that piece of land from him, and he's like, be like a bank for us, okay? But, um, you know, I thought, oh, great, the breakthrough is here. <laughs> now we're going to do the development and, you know, we're going to do the business for the Lord and everything is going to work out. That was 13, 13 and a half years ago. But it didn't go like that. Okay, so then still, you know, some months we could pay him Harold, then three months we could pay him, then he cancels the contracts again. Then we, uh, he goes back and says, oh, please, I'm Harold, we've got money again, we want to purchase this land. We went through the whole process of the rights. There were no electricity. There were no. Oh, there was. It was a long story. We saw so many people, investors, banks, funds. Okay, but um, yeah, long, long, long process. Okay, but I'll tell you now what the what the end is. So I just wanted to tell you, 13 and a half years ago, I thought we were there. <laughs> okay, I was. 
you know, we were very blessed. We received a lot of prophetic words because at some stage, you know, holidays were not one of the places we went on. So for a very long time, the only place I ever went to was on Women's Gap because it's cheap. It's 600 Rand for two nights. And you get food and most of the time somebody sponsored you. So I went on so many Women's Gaps. But I mean, the Lord knew I had to be there. If I was not there, if, I, if, I, if our finances were sorted out, you know, I would have been other places maybe, you know, because, because we're in that position. It's like, yes, I'm going. So, but now I'm in that rhythm, you know. If somebody says there's a women's conference and there's something there, I go because I know the Lord has always got something for you. Always. He's always got something for you. He wants to bless you. And I know sometimes it's a bit of a sacrifice. We have to organize the children and there's many things. But, you know, that just the way He blesses you, if you go out of your comfort and you go. I mean, I remember one time, I knew, you know, he, he had problems with his shoulders and he was at a men's camp as well. He also only went to men's camp. He was at a men's camp as well. And he was sitting in the smaller, small groups and his shoulder was so sore. And there was a guy, he had to get an operation because he was not getting better. And he just sat next to him and just put his hand on his shoulder and he just said, I feel in the name of Jesus. And he got hot and he got healed. And just by going there. At the other time, there was also a pastor from Pastor Ed. And I was in the audience and he asked me to stand up and he said, I see there's cancer over your family. Um, your grandmother's, but you will never get cancer. You know, no, just be there that day. day. You know, I don't ever have to worry about you. So, that's how amazing the Lord is. So I just want to encourage you, if you've got any opportunity, go. The Lord has always got something for you. And sometimes it's not the minister or the pastor or the prophetic person. Maybe it's somebody just sitting next to you and introduce you to somebody or just give a word to you that you need at that day. Okay, and then the last thing. Okay, the last thing is... Um, Tidings of it. You know what? Nobody can ever take that away from you. I think sometimes it's easier if you only get 500 rand or 1,000 rand. Because it's easy to give 50 rand or to give 100 rand. Then when you start getting 100,000, okay? because you give your time and offering. So the Lord, I can just really testify that I never, ever had to ask anybody for anything. Okay? The Lord always came through for us. I mean, for a long stage, I mean, we, we we couldn't buy cars or anything. We couldn't get financing or anything. So this one guy, um, um, it's, a, it's an Indian guy, no, it's, a, it's a Muslim guy. He's a colored guy. Some stage we didn't have a car. So he gave us his seven series BMW to drive around with for, for two years. He said, I mean, you and your family need a car. There's a car for you. But we never, I mean, our own family didn't help us because they were thinking, why are you in this kind of situation? And I, and I, because I mean, I also thought sometimes, but why? <laughs> How is it possible that things can go wrong so many times? So, yeah, so, so I never had to ask anybody. I would just go to the Lord, and it happened recently and many times. I said, Lord, you are my provider. Your word says, bring your full tide to my storehouse and test me if I will not open the gates of heaven and I will keep the devourer. And every single time he came through for us. Weird we, not, not always the way you think he's going to come through, because his ways are not our ways, but he always, always comes through. Okay, so um, now in the beginning of January, um, December, we met another group, okay, and these people are, they've got a fund from overseas, and we are, so what I want to tell you, if you drive past that piece of land, and you see that we are starting to clean there, and that we are starting to build, you must know mm. that the Lord is good and that His promises are true. And I want to just tell you, ask you as well, don't give up on what the Lord has promised you. Even okay. if it takes so long, you know, if you keep on believing and if, if you don't give up, the Word will come to fulfillment. Okay, can I just pray for us? Okay. I just want to put your hands on your hearts and I just want to say, Lord, Holy Spirit, um, just show us, Lord, if there's any place in our hearts, still, Lord, that we've got any unforgiveness or bitterness or anything, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to forgive those people and we will bless them, Lord, so that we can get free. Lord, 
And then I pray for every person here today that has got a big dream and that the promise that you've given them, Lord, and I speak breakthrough over them, Lord. We declare breakthrough over them in Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that it's a Kairos time, Lord. It will not be for, for their glory, Lord Jesus, but for your glory. Thank you, Lord, that your word is true, that you are faithful to your promises, Lord. Thank you that your promises are yes and amen, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you will be glorified, Lord, through what you are doing in and through our lives, Lord. Always help us to stay humble, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that people will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, Lord, through our lives, Father God. Your name be glorified. Thank you, Lord Jesus, I pray in Jesus.